Recently I picked up a digital timer remote for some macro photography, and while I've been very happy with the unit, I think it's very strange that it doesn't come with a power off button. Now, the back of this device says that it has a current draw of 20 milliamps, but the device only takes two AAA batteries. So is this just a matter of poor engineering? I did only buy this for $5, or does this device have some type of deep sleep feature? I've taken two pieces of copper foil with backing and placed it in the battery terminals of this timer unit. After hooking this up to my multimeter, I've found that this draws a very small amount of current, only 5.1 microamps. We know this device contains two AAA batteries and that they're used in series. What this means is compared to a single battery, we have a 3 volts of potential, but only the same battery capacity as a single AAA battery. In this case, it's advertised as 1,150 milliamp hours. Now, practically, you're only going to be able to see 70 to 80 percent of these 1,150 milliamp hours, and that's because as an alkaline battery drains, its voltage does as well. Now there's a regulator in this device that has a cutoff voltage, and once it reaches this point, then the device will simply uh, shut off. Now, taking this into consideration, and the fact that we know that this device has a deep sleep mode load current of 5.1 microamps, we're actually able to identify the battery life of this device. In this case, we use the formula here. And the formula for that is battery life capacity in milliamp hours, in this case 920 milliamp hours, over load current, and in this case that's 5.1 microamps. And if we plug this in and calculate this, we'll find this device is actually able to run for 20 years. With a deep sleep current draw of only 5.1 microamps, this device really doesn't need a power switch, but I'm sure at some point in time I'm going to accidentally leave it in some type of active state. And if the rating here is truly accurate, that means that this device is going to be dead within two days. So let's take this apart and see how hard this is going to be to add a switch. So after opening this up, I can see that the positive terminal of the battery connects through this trace and then out through the rest of the circuit. I think that this would be a prime spot to actually add a switch. From a previous project, I had one of these tiny switches right here that I purchased off DigiKey, and it just so happens that it fits perfectly right in this little notch right there. After placing this switch within the case where I'd like it to reside, the next thing I'm going to do is use this exacto knife to mark on the solder mask where the terminals of the switch are present on the PCB. Before moving the switch, I'm also going to make a mark in the VCC line where I plan to cut it later on. To be 100% sure I don't run into a situation where I have a short, I've elected to cut out about a 1mm portion of the original VDD trace. The switch is going to be soldered to bare copper, so to ensure that the solder sticks, I'm going to use a no clean flux pen. As is the case that this unit will not close because the actuator of the switch sticks out the side. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to mark where this actuator pokes out, and then use a file to cut a notch in the case. After cleaning up the filings with a wet cloth, the only thing left to do now is to shut the case and see if everything works. Well, it looks like the switch is working as expected. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it.